Hello everybody and welcome back to Mr. Stansfield's education videos for this two-part look at using text and the displacement mapping tool in Photopea. Let's jump in now to our next text layer. Now it doesn't really matter where I put this, but you could have your water layer selected here or your background layer selected. It shouldn't matter. But if you're following along and trying to do everything exactly like I am, go ahead and select the top layer before you do the next step. Grab your type tool here. Again, the shortcut key is T. You just hit the T key on the keyboard and it will select the type tool. And let's go ahead and choose a different font. The font that we're going to use is called Passion One. So this is just a, a random um, sans serif bold font that I chose. And again, for this particular activity, for this particular effect, I should say, um, typically larger, bolder, wider fonts will work better. So let's go ahead and choose this one here, Passion One. Now this size is left over as well as the color from the water text layer. So let's go ahead and keep the size, but change the color back before we start typing by clicking and dragging down to the bottom left or the bottom right corner. You can see that 000 also plugs in over here. You could plug in 000 and it will give you the same results. Click OK. Now let's go ahead and start typing. All right, so if you click down here, it will load that font in and you should be able to type in. Let's go ahead and type in sand like a so. Now if I just hit return or enter, watch what happens it actually moves the cursor below the sand. Uh, I don't want that, so I'm gonna hit backspace or delete, and then I'm gonna just make sure that I'm confirming my text by clicking this little check mark right here. Now again, I could go up here to change my size, but the easiest thing to do is probably grab the transform tool. Now you could go to the move tool and then select auto, um, uh, transform controls rather. Auto select might be something that you would want to select here. But in any case, transform controls will show me the transform controls. And you can click and drag from this corner here. You can make it taller, you can make it wider, you can make it longer. You can change pretty much any way you want. What this does when you have the transform controls up here, it gives you the free transform tool. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and hit escape to cancel that. I'm gonna uncheck transform controls just to show you where you can find this other places. It's right here. And the shortcut key, again, on a Mac is Command and Option. On a Chromebook or a PC, you're going to see Control and Alt. So Control, Alt, T, if you click that, it gives you the same options here. So what you can do is you can click and drag that out. You can move it, drag it out to the right here. And what you want to do is similarly size in terms of filling up the sand area down here. You want to make it similar to the water. So, you know, the, the actual font size, we're not too worried about what that is. We're just visually, you can see a little teeny red line in the middle when it's centered. Um, something like this, I think looks fine. Click the little check mark to confirm your transformation. And let's go ahead and actually let's do that again. I'm going to grab the shortcut key command option or control alt T it gives me that transform controls. So I can rotate to match the diagonal lines here. And then I'll go ahead and click that little confirmation. Okay, once again, I want to center it here. Okay, now I'm going to show you a little bit of a different way of applying this displacement uh, filter. It's a little bit different of an application. Um, first thing we got to do, though, make that a smart layer. So here it is, the sand, double click it. Uh, I'm sorry, don't double click it, right click it, and then convert to smart object. And now we've got our sand smart object. This little box in the bottom right hand corner of the layer palette is the thing that indicates to us that it is indeed a smart object object. Go ahead and up, go up here to the filter, distort, display. So far, nothing is different. Drag that up so you can see the effect of what you're doing here. And what we are going to do is make sure that we select the background layer. That's really important to apply the sand texture. And we're going to drag this up. Let's start roughly in the same place, somewhere around, this is 4343, 43, somewhere around the same place as the water. Start here. Um, it looks okay. I think we can actually bring it up a little bit more. 53. That looks pretty good. Let's overdo it and see what happens. So 70-ish. Now, I don't think that's actually overdone at all. Let's go ahead and really crank it up here. Okay, there it is. Um, 
it it spreads out the effect a little bit the, the more you kind of um, drag these uh, sliders up and you can also see it displaces or shifts the word up and to the left because we're doing a horizontal and vertical um, adjustment I'm going to actually hit X right here to undo that and I'm going to grab the move tool right V again and I'm going to click and drag the sand a little bit lower so it's a little bit right bottom justified before I do my filter distort displace and that way when I crank these up somewhere around this 50 60 ish um, oh what's happening down here if your text looks something like this make sure your source is changed to the correct thing and so what I want to do is just find that center point here and I think somewhere around 60 ish seems to be a good um, pixel range for this displace on the sand text go ahead and click OK um, now, the last time we did this with the water, we changed the blending mode and the fill, but we are actually going to use down here the effects, EFF, the layer style, will apply a layer style to this, and that will actually change the way that the um, text interacts with the texture. So we've applied the filter. Let's go ahead and drag the fill down to zero before we apply the effect. You can see it goes away when we bring the fill down, but let's go ahead here down to EFF, and then drag up to blending options. Now the blending options will give us all of the options that we have access to. I'm gonna drag this up and over here so we can see our text down here. The first thing we're gonna do is select color overlay. And you can see that text is now back. You need to select it by checking it and then select it by clicking once on the text. Let's go ahead and adjust the color. In this case, pick a color somewhere in this orange range. You don't want it to be the exact same color as the sand, but something like this, a little bit darker um, than the sand. This is a kind of a brown. I liked that peach that we had. Let's go ahead and see if we can find it. I guess as we drag up, there's a little bit more saturation in color, something like this. So that's matched pretty well. Click OK to confirm your color. And then we go here, change the blend mode of the color overlay to, again, linear burn. So instead of doing it in the layer, we're going to do this blend mode here in the color overlay. And you can change the opacity too, and that will reduce the opacity. You may want to come back to that and change the opacity here. You can also change the opacity of the layer itself. Let's go ahead and choose bevel and emboss next, and then select it. So you have to click it, and then you have to select it to get these options over here. Let's go ahead and choose emboss. And this is meant to kind of look like a stamp almost, like, like the, the text is stamped into the sand itself in the image. So we're gonna go ahead and choose emboss. Then we're gonna choose down. Then we're going to bring the depth up slightly, just a little bit, 120%. And let's go ahead and change the size to 10 instead of five. We're gonna go ahead and soften this three Okay, so your number should be 120, 10, and 3 on the top. And you can see this effect is, is actually a little bit more dramatic um, than I had thought it, it would be. So let's actually bring this down again. 100, let's bring this to 6, and then let's actually soften this a little bit less. One pixel, I think. This is a little bit more subtle. So again, I'm looking at the text, seeing what's happening as I make a change here in the layer style dialog box, and then making an adjustment. That's key. Don't just follow, look at your own file and make sure things are going the same way. Now we're gonna change our angle. Um, this is 30-30, what we wanna do, if you look here, there's two people and their shadows are very long, kind of uh, indicating that the sun or the light source is above and the shadow is below. So we're gonna actually match that by going up here and selecting the angle. And uh, I would say, Let's go ahead and do this right here. So negative 90, and then let's go here to 45. And what that's gonna do is gonna simulate this sort of style of shadow where the shadow is kind of more on the bottom than it is on the side. Um, uh, let's actually drag this down. So that number is going to increase. So zero, negative 90, and then zero uh, instead of 45. And that should give us Oh, it doesn't. All right, so that's interesting. Let me pause it and figure this out. All right, just playing around here. Um, I didn't really want to uh, record it, but basically what I did was I clicked and drag around on this angle until I got my shadow, the, the darker part of this, to look 
uh, kind of the way that I wanted to. And so what I arrived at was negative 130 here and 30 degrees here. Plug those in, your mileage may vary, but it should look about the same. We're gonna change the mode over here from screen to linear dodge, and then we're gonna change the mode from multiply to linear burn. We're gonna linear dodge, linear burn, and we're gonna bring the opacity of these layers down a little bit. Let's look at 30, 30 and see what that looks like. I'm using the tab key to switch between these, and that's a little bit subtler. I think that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and plug it up to 45 and 45 and see how that looks. I think a little better. So this particular image, this particular uh, use of the uh, emboss here, um, somewhere around 30 to 45 linear dodge on the highlight, the white areas, and then linear burn on the dark areas over here. I think we are ready to go. So I'm gonna click okay. Again, I could go back to my color overlay and change the opacity, but I'm just gonna change the overall opacity of this layer over here. So with the sand layer selected, I go up here to opacity, Let's just drag that down ever so slightly. Somewhere down here, 83%, 73%, 50%. Um, you could also go back and adjust the color. So the cool thing about doing the effect in a layer is over here, this color overlay, if I go back in there, I can actually change the color after I change my opacity. I think somewhere in the 75% is probably pretty good. But just to show you how to do that, let's do it. So if I go here and I click on the cover overlay twice, double click, I can go in here and I can change my color. So I go into the color picker and then I can see real time, if I change it to pink, it will change the color of the text here, okay? Um, I'm gonna actually X out of that because I was pretty happy with the color but you can adjust it after the fact. If you wanted to, you just click OK and then OK again. The cool thing about doing this in a layer is that if you pick the wrong color, you can always go back and choose another one. So this is, I think, now complete. This is actually the, the final image. This is what I want you to turn in. Um, you, uh, you've got two different ways of applying the displacement filter to uh, text. And as long as you've been following along step by step, your image should look pretty similar. You might have slightly different opacity, slightly different color, um, slightly different texture application through the displacement filter. Um, but for the most part, um, you should have something that looks like this. If it's dramatically different, uh, check in with me or start over and, and see where you went wrong. Um, but there you go. This is how to use text in Photopea and how to apply the displacement filter to match the texture of the image below.